Now, one thing you're going to notice after doing this for a while is the ability to forget that you have jobs on waiting. I, I got clients waiting for me to work on their car because I am the man. But uh, getting caught up in little projects or self projects, I tend to forget they're there. So when I role play the shop, I first my first respect comes towards the customers. And then this this all play toy thing for me. So what I'll do is that sometimes I will do a car and then after that I'll take care of some customers. Probably do at least four four customers all together and then go back and do another car. But it doesn't hurt. It's it may not be much, but it's it's money nevertheless. So if you role play your shop in which you care about customers, that's that would be an idea. Do one of your little car fix ups, either for your own collection or retail, and then when you're done here, go over and uh, take care of one or two, maybe four customers, and then go back into it again. Because, you know, your customers is what got your business started. So if you play the game, if you like playing the game like that, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people just use the customers so they get to where they're at and then they just live in the auction world and there's no getting them out. But like I said, it's all about how you role play the game, so it's not like what they're doing is wrong. It's what they choose to do. See what I'm saying? That's like if somebody, we got one that likes to steal parts off a customer's cars and he likes to make his money that way. Well, you know, ethically it's wrong, but in the game wise, he can do pretty much what he wants, to be honest. So if he runs his shop like that, then he runs his shop like that. So, you know, not here to to sit there and say, what? Well, that's not how you run your shop. We, we all know how, how far that will fly in real life. That's that's neither here nor there. Crankshaft pulley. So, uh, that's the, one of the key things. I think sometimes this gets lost somewhere. And then you have people saying, well, this is the way to do this, and this is the way to do that, and and none of it's accurate because it isn't the way to do this or that. It never was. I mean, the way to do it is is that if the part is bad, it needs to be replaced. You replace the part. If the part is in a manner of orange, which is parts that are going to be bad, if you want to change those, that's on you as a role-playing deal. You can do that. That you're not penalized by the game for doing that whatsoever. That's what this has always been about. And sometimes I think some of uh, the players kind of forget that. And then they start, well, you know, this is the way this has got to be done. That I just sent off. I just, I mean, I, granted I threw money out the window, but to prove my point, I just sent off a car to auction for scrap. Okay? So how, that's very realistic. So right there, that just shows you you can do as you see fit in your shop. I really stress this the most because... People will take other people's ideas to heart, and then they go up there, and when it doesn't work, they get frustrated, and then they take somebody else's idea, because they're telling them, well, this is the way you have to do it, and they're doing it that way, and, and they run into a problem, and then now they're miserable with the game. They don't like it. They think it's too hard or ridiculous, and they don't see, and they fail to see the point in the game. The whole idea is, is to play, it's like... Like Red Dot is an investment company. So what they did was is that out of their pocket they built all of this. And they took you and put you in charge of all this to make money off of. This game is free play from the get-go. That means right when you start day one in this shop, it is free play. Running it the way you want. That's why I stressed about that. Because I want to make sure that it's you know, that you guys when you're out there playing the game you're you hear other people's ideas and you put it into consideration. And if you try it and if it works for you, hey, great. If it does not work for you, then try a different idea. Or come up with something on your own. Think outside the box when you're doing it. To be able to put it into a, a form of order. Don't just do it because this guy said this is the only way it can be done. Or that guy said this is the better way of doing it. Because everybody's got a better way of doing something. But it's always because it is their way of doing it. 
So, like, somebody may go up there and say, well, do you think your way is better? Well, let's take a look at my way for a second. Okay. The first thing that I stated, which was my way, was right off the bat that you play this game according to how you want to role play yourself in this game. So, really, it has nothing to do with my way. Because... I didn't say, oh, do it like this, because this is how I do it, and this has been working for me for a long time. No, I said, take the game, go play it according to what suits your needs, how this is going to work for you. So it's a very important thing to remember. That's how you enjoy yourself in the game. You're not enjoying yourself in the game, except be miserable by uh, trying to do things that are not working out for you, and then, pr and then being going along with the persistent that this is the ultimate way to do it. Because as you see, for the most part, I've been doing exactly opposite of what a lot of people say. And I'm doing just fine. So this works for me. See what I'm saying? So it's all about you. How you want to run that shop. That's a very important thing to remember. I know I brought it up a few times, but we're starting to come towards the end of these shop tutorials. And I wanted to make sure that this was clear. Because I'm pretty sure there's some out there going... Well, I wouldn't have done it that way. That was wrong. No, there's nothing wrong about what I did. What's wrong is, is that you're persisting that there's a, only a one-way deal and it's the way that you do it. And that's what's wrong. Because it doesn't exist, not even, a real, in, not even in a real area. I know guys explain. That's like when I was towing. Somebody came out there trying to tell me. The best way to tow these cars is like this. You just take, throw these J-hooks wherever you have. No, you don't. You don't do that. Each J-hook, chain assembly, and everything has T-hooks, slots, and R-hooks for a reason. You don't attach a J-hook to every single thing you see on it. So basically, what it comes down, each tool is different. If I prefer to use the bridle and uh, mini J's, then I would use the bridle system and mini J's, and I could care less who pro who protests against that, because the manufacturer has placed holes down there by the frame supports and underbody areas where they're reinforced for the very purpose of these attachments to be installed. Car carriers don't go up there and throw J-hooks on every piece of the car suspension and tie it down with that. They use the tools that are on that truck for that very purpose. So as you can see, even in that field you come across people, oh, you're doing it wrong, but nevertheless though, they don't understand how they bent the exhaust with the J-hook. And, and you may laugh, but I, you have no idea how serious I am with that one. They have no idea how they did that because they attached the J-hook to the exhaust. It's the strongest part there it's supposed to hold. That's how. That's their reasoning. So there's just some stuff that just doesn't make sense. So that's why when you're playing this game, you role play it according to the way you want, how you see fit. And when someone gives you ideas, including myself, when I give you tips, there are tips to be considered. It is up to you. If you think that you could tear this whole suspension out and mix it with all the parts in the front and you could be able to keep track of that in your inventory with also the engine parts, brother, have at it. Knock yourself out. That's too difficult for me. I, I have enough problems trying to be able to do as the years go by because, because, of, uh, uh, because of certain reasons. So it gets difficult for me each year. So therefore, it's all on you how you deal with it. See what I'm saying? Now the oil filter, now for the oil fills, some people got lost. On these older cars and engines, that oil cap fill could be either here or towards the rear. I never understood why they didn't always keep them on the front. But there are other cars that have, have them on towards the front. But they're like right here for this particular engine model for sure. Okay, so we got everything in order here. Double check our sheet, no parts are missing. Now what we're going to try to do is, is that whatever we can take off of the body panel, whoops, wrong, wrong thing. Uh, whatever we could take off of here is what we're going to uh, attempt to do. So we're going to take off whatever, all these parts we're going to take off. And I'm going to try to beat them out on that bench first before I go and buy them new. So I'm trying to do is spend less than I want the car to restore. So what we're trying to do is full restore it. See, that looks right when, it, when this car has got the headlights out. 
I know a lot of people recognize what that is, but here's what's going on. The, uh, the headlights, when you see them in here, this vehicle use hide headlights. So when this is closed, it looks like this. And then when you turn the headlights on, it opens up, and then you see the headlights. So really, having the headlights where you can see them is, is considered accurate. Now I'm going to try to clean up, fix electrical, pound out metal, refurbish the plastic on the lighting. Because there are certain buffers you could use to get scratches out of them to restore them so they can look good like they used to. I forgot to delete all the engine stuff out. Right, you know what? Let's go to the body switch. There we go. Everything survived. So. so, we go put these on and then purchase whatever else we need. Okay, here we go. Now, she's looking pretty good. So, we're going to take her into the paint shop and we're going to repaint this car. But, uh, however, though, however, though, we're going to do one thing different. Okay. That's the factory color look. We're going to go custom. And I'm thinking I know what I'm looking for in custom for this particular car. So it's going to be all about trying to adjust these to find that color. They don't have like a color code. At least I haven't seen it. Except here, you know, there's, these don't do anything. That's okay. We're going to get it just right. Okay. Had to play with that color scheme just a little bit. But yeah, I got what I was looking for. <laughs> I know there are some out there going, oh, no way. Yeah, way. There it is. Just missing decals on the thing for the doors and the roof. Other than that, that is pretty much what you think it is. Okay. Well, the whole point of this tutorial was not to admire a uh, car from an old TV show, but to take a look at the... Uh, what was the purpose of this car? purpose of this car was to get everything to be 100%. So everything was either pounded into 100% or bought 100%. So there are those who this is what they want to do. New condition would have been fine, like 85% or so, because that's like, kind of like new condition broken in. But we were going for the 100%, and this is where we're at with it. And this car will be going out for this price. Pow! we sell so now we will now move on to the next part the last part of the tutorial is to uh, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to bring a car in here that's not going to have anything and we're going to just build it with new parts here we go